Get away, Paul. Walker coming through, mate. Glasgow, huh? Scotland, O2 Academy. Let's do it. Are you excited to see the band play tonight? <laughs> nice. Is this your first time seeing us yeah. play? First time? First time. Any, uh, any songs you want to hear in particular? Um, just the whole set list. <laughs> Buzzy yeah. Prabhan. Nice. It's like Joe Satriani's playing here in May. That's pretty cool. It's always neat playing the same stages as these amazing musicians, you know. I feel like I'm not worthy, but I don't know. Yeah, it's cool. All right, it's the morning of the show here. This is the upper balcony pretty high up. I like to come and explore the venue in the morning and just kind of come and sit in the seats. Sort of, I don't know, get a feel for the room, I suppose you could say. And uh, yeah, just woke up. I feel like I'm getting a bit sick, which uh, it's like, I feel like it just happens every tour. It, like, it's like impossible to go on tour without getting sick. You know, you're meeting like a hundred people a day. You're sharing a, a tour bus with so many people in close quarters. You're not really sleeping the best. Anyways, it's hitting me now, so we'll see how I do today. Language very it's a sure thing to over here. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're like, they're like, talking to her and me and John are like, I don't know what's going on right now. <laughs> I was like, I know, I can't really understand it. Either, right? It's awesome though. Yeah. I've literally about to say the same thing. Everyone's just on the downfall. Yeah, the whole tour is sick. <laughs> yeah, literally. In Who was the first? Yeah. In the wrong way. <laughs> In the wrong way, yeah. Who was the first? In the right way too, both ways. <laughs> so one thing that's really cool about touring in the UK here is the tour buses are different from the American ones. So the American tour buses, it's all one level. You got a front lounge, a bunk area, and then a room in the back. In the UK, it's actually double-decker tour buses, which we have right now. So it's kind of cool and you have a lot more room but at the same time you don't because the thing that surprised me was that the ceilings are super low to make room for the two levels. So like you're pretty much you know walking hunched over the entire time you're in the bus. Now it is nice having the, the two floors but that definitely is a big downside. Alright so I'm going to give you a quick tour of the tour bus here. I'm going to show you what's going on. So you walk in the side. And right away, don't mind the dirty dishes, but there's a kitchen area here and a front lounge. And you can't see it, but I'm like totally ducked down right now. Like it's super uncomfortable to even walk around because of how low the ceilings are. I'm gonna feel the neck pain after this for sure. So you got fridge space there, keep some food, kitchen area to make some lunches or dinners or whatever you wanna do. Bathroom down here. You get a sense of the low ceilings there. It honestly, like, you know, it's a first world problem, but it really is a pain to walk around with how low these, <laughs> these roofs are. So then you go up the stairs here, got some storage area, uh, coat hangers to hang your coats. More storage there for like, you know, backpacks, small suitcases. Got a series of bunks back here. This is my bunk, actually. Reading that Brian Johnson biography. And the beds are actually pretty comfortable here. Got a room back there as well. And then, yeah, more bunks over here. More storage, lots of storage on these double-decker buses. And 16 bunks in total. Whereas on the American-style tour buses, you generally only see 12 bunks or eight bunks depending on uh, the style of bus. And this is the upstairs lounge. So whole nother lounge area. So definitely a lot of room, a lot of space. As long as you can deal with uh, walking hunched over the entire time, um, you're good. Probably gonna have to see my chiropractor when I get home from this tour, but uh, it's all worth it. And then you got the secret button there. back outside. Ready to rock. I 
will say this tour has been one of my favorite tours I've ever done. I love coming over here in the UK. It's such a privilege playing in this part of the world. The shows have all been sold out. Well, all, all of them except two. Actually, today is one of the ones that isn't sold out. But yeah, it's always fun playing sellout shows, playing headlining shows. And I've been lucky to see a lot of really neat things here on tour during my time in between the shows. Like, I went to the oldest pub in England, which is pretty cool, it's supposedly established in 1189. So it's pretty crazy to be at a place like that. And I walked in and I was like, oh my God, this is so cool to be here. And I went and ordered from the bar and the bartender actually recognized me. And he's like, oh my God, Lonnie, I saw you guys play a download last year. And I was like, oh man, that's so cool. I wasn't expecting that. Cause I really don't get recognized out in public often, you know, maybe every now and again, like when I'm like not at a gig, you know? So that really caught me off guard, but it was cool. And he asked me for a photo and he's like, I could totally get fired for doing this. And I was like, oh, that's all right. So that was neat. All right, so what's going on here is this is our VIP meet and greet, which we do every day before every show. Generally, we have around 100 people who come and do it and they get early access to the venue and they get to meet us, take a photo with us and have a brief conversation. It's a really good way to get that face-to-face -face connection and we love doing it. And we hear a lot of really nice stories and really, really interesting uh, takes on our music uh, from people who come to this. And this generally lasts about an hour or so each time. Yeah, it's so different than people make it out to be. Because the only thing people see is like us okay. on stage. And then they don't see whatever you do for the rest of the day, like what we're doing right now, for That's example. It. And like, yeah, the lack of sleep, like not eating properly or trying to eat the best you can. That's it. Anyway, so yeah, I try to show all of it from all angles and show Sick. people like the reality of what it is like to be on tour. That's cool. The best I can anyways. And actually another thing, just last night as I was leaving the venue after our show in Newcastle, walking back to the tour bus with my suitcase, this young lady who was waiting outside stopped me and she told me the coolest thing. She said that a couple years ago she was going through a really difficult time and saying how her friend bought her uh, cameo message from me which if you don't know is a service where you can pay celebrities to uh, say stuff for you, give you advice. Not that I think of myself as a celebrity, but I'm on the site. And anyways, this girl was going through a tough time. She was about to drop out of school and she needed some advice to whether or not she could stick with it. And I offered my two cents on it. And I guess whatever I had said to her really, really helped and it, you know, was one of the main factors in her continuing on with her studies. And fast forward a couple years later, she saw me outside the venue and she told me this and she ended up graduating and actually just last week she assisted in her first major surgery as a doctor. And, you know, it's cool that I was able to help her out in some way and be a part of it and this isn't music related but it kind of is because it shows the power that music has in the way that it can connect us in so many ways outside of the songs and bring us together in a way that not much else can you know and I think this is important to remember especially in times like now where you know budget cuts are happening in music programs and you hear about music programs and schools being canceled and, and stuff like that. And I think it's important to remember that, you know, music really has so much power and it's not just about the songs. It's not just about the entertainment. It's about the, the value that it, it gives to us and the way that it can help us through so many of life's challenges and connect us in a way that nothing else really can. <laughs> 